Muito boa tarde. Eu irei uh, falar em inglês segundo as instruções que me foram dadas. Uh, Excelência, uh, Minister Naledi Pandor, it has been a great pleasure to welcome you to uh, Lisbon. We've had a very good uh, first meeting. Our discussions will continue over lunch, but it has been uh, extremely useful for us to be able to uh, analyze jointly the state of our bilateral relations which are very good and, and uh, which uh, have uh, allowed us also to identify a number of areas in which we can intensify our uh, collaboration and joint work, uh, particularly in the economic field, issue areas like uh, renewable energies, uh, also uh, aquaculture, our joint interest in uh, oceans issues uh, have been part of our discussion. The Portuguese community in South Africa is also, of course, an important uh, bond that we have between us. And we are looking forward to the state visit of uh, our president in the near future. Uh, we have also had the opportunity to look at some of the most uh, pressing issues of the international agenda. Um, of course, we have uh, had a, a short discussion which we shall be able to follow up on. Uh, afterwards uh, about uh, the situation in Ukraine, the invasion of, of Ukraine. We have uh, also had the opportunity to look at uh, regional issues in, uh, on the African continent, situation in Mozambique and Cabo Delgado, where both Portugal and South Africa have been uh, working with the Mozambican authorities uh, to improve the situation. Um, I've uh, had the opportunity of learning about uh, situations in other countries, such as Eswatini, Lesotho, and uh, of course the Democratic Republic of Congo, which is a country uh, which is in the heart of the African continent and with impact on uh, various other parts of the, of, of the, of the continent. Uh, the situation, we touched upon the situation in Sudan, which uh, is uh, dramatic uh, in terms of Sudan itself, but also in terms of the impact upon other countries, such as uh, Chad or Central African Republic. <laughs> this uh, shows that between Portugal and South Africa, there is a very rich set of um, common interests that uh, are uh, important for our bilateral uh, relationship and also important for work that we can jointly do in, uh, in multilateral context in, in the international field as a whole. So uh, thank you very much, Minister, for coming to Lisbon. It's a great pleasure to have this opportunity and uh, I'm looking forward to continuing uh, discussions, both in the immediate future over lunch, but more generally between Portugal and South Africa. Thank you very much, uh, Minister, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm really thrilled to uh, be back in Lisbon. It's been a long time, and I hope that uh, my visit uh, will engender a vibrant activity uh, between our two countries. I do believe that now that COVID-19 is over, we wish to see more South Africans as tourists in Portugal and more Portuguese citizens coming through to South Africa on holiday. So one of the uh, requests I have put to Minister Cravino is to approach the leadership of TAP because we'd like to have direct flights to South Africa. We believe this will enhance tourism uh, between our two countries and ensure uh, that uh, we really build the tourism sector, which was very severely harmed in both countries by the impact uh, of the pandemic. We have discussed matters of security uh, throughout the world. Uh, we are concerned as uh, ministers of foreign affairs about the impact of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine on the economies of many developing countries. In particular, Africa is experiencing worrying levels of food uh, insecurity given the scarcity of fertilizer and cereal grain uh, uh, which the African continent imports from both uh, uh, countries that are now uh, at war with each other. So it is important that uh, we devote greater attention 
to finding a diplomatic solution to this particular war and to bringing it to an end as soon as possible. We also expressed to South Africa our concern that uh, the overriding focus all of us correctly have on Russia and Ukraine has taken attention away from very worrying conflicts in other parts of the world. The people of Palestine are being killed every day. We're not talking about them. Uh, people in Mali, in Chad, in Burkina Faso, in Sudan are under barrage uh, of artillery on a daily basis. But all of these conflicts have been rendered invisible by our focus on what is happening uh, in Europe. We need to return to being concerned about the entire world and not just one part of it. When we speak of international law, of the United Nations Charter, we must be concerned about all people and all nations. And for South Africa, this is imperative because we believe all human beings are deserving of security, of justice, and of freedom. And so we, as South Africa and Portugal, I hope are going to partner effectively to create a world in which there's greater peace and stability and very robust attention to development because we need to ensure that women enjoy opportunity, that people in developing countries enjoy prosperity. We need to ensure that we exist to change the world and not merely to be focused on one part of it. So we've agreed that the whole world matters and that we will use our partnership as South Africa and Portugal to look at how the European Union and Africa might work together to address issues of development, to address issues of prosperity, to address issues of everyone enjoying a better life. We also want to protect our oceans. We want to ensure that we sustainably uh, develop a blue economy because we border uh, the ocean as the two countries, and so there's significant opportunities for us to be examples of sustainability, but also of a responsible use of the opportunities that are offered by an ocean economy. I uh, appeal to Minister Cravino that if there's anyone who has a solution to energy challenges, they're welcome to South Africa, because we have a serious problem of electricity availability. And we have been inviting economic actors throughout the world to uh, join South Africa in building a very strong uh, green energy uh, sector to improve the availability of electricity and to ensure that we support our economy to grow. Finally, we're most grateful to the government and people of Portugal for the support they've provided to our region, SADEC, which normally is a very, very stable and peaceful region, but which has had the entry of extremist groups into our sister country, Mozambique, in the region of Cabo Delgado. And Portugal was one of the countries that stepped forward very quickly to provide help to the government of Mozambique to address this problem. As SADEC, we have put a mission uh, in place in the Cabo Delgado uh, province, and we are combating uh, this terrorist group to ensure uh, that we stop them uh, from entrenching instability and the loss of life uh, in that region. And we really value the support that Portugal has given both to our region and to the people uh, of Mozambique. So Minister, thank you so much for welcoming me. And uh, we look forward as South Africa to welcoming President D'Souza to South Africa uh, during his visit uh, very soon. And I'm sure it will be a very, very successful visit. And I know he's going to get a wonderful reception from Portuguese diaspora that lives in South Africa. Thank you very much. We have two questions. Yeah, it's about the, the conflict, about the, the war. Can you clarify what is your position about the, the conflict? Because in the past, uh, you said that you, you are available to eliminate the, the conflict. What, uh, what can you do? What, what are you doing now? Well, uh, there is a committee of six African presidents 
that will be traveling to Russia and to Ukraine to meet the two leaders, to discuss with them how we may be of assistance in finding a diplomatic solution to the war. Because we believe there's been more talk about how to support the war than how to end it. And as Africa, we would like to play a role, if we can, humbly, in trying to bring about peace. We believe, from the experience of South Africa, that the most worrying problems can be resolved by diplomacy. Just as we were persuaded before the end of apartheid to talk to our enemies and negotiate a settlement, we did so under extremely difficult circumstances. And so I'm very pleased that uh, six leaders on the African continent have agreed to form a team that will be a peace mission uh, going to Russia and going to Ukraine. And we're very pleased that the two leaders, President Putin and President Zelensky, have agreed to receive uh, the peace group. Another one? Six, the six countries, it's uh, President of Senegal, it's President Macky Sall, President of Ghana, President Nana Akufo Addo, uh, President of Uganda, President Museveni, President of South Africa, it's President Ramaphosa, President of Egypt, who is President Al-Sisi. Who have I forgotten? Republic of Congo, President Dennis Sasso Wesso. Those are the six. I hope it's six, I'm not good at math. Yes. <laughs> uh, I have a question about the, the, this year, the day of Portugal, uh, it's being um, celebrated in South Africa. I would like to know what is being here prepared and if there is any particular attention uh, being paid by the authorities to the report for something healthy against the Portuguese uh, community and do some business uh, this week. Um, well, there's crime in South Africa, as there is in many countries throughout the world. So I don't think there's a particular targeting of one category of people against, as opposed to another. We are looking forward to the visit of the president to South Africa. We have a very large uh, community of Portuguese people in the diaspora who are very South African as well. So a lovely diversity. And we uh, believe that his visit will be a wonderful celebration. Uh, it will include, I understand, many aspects, uh, but I don't want to spoil uh, your reporting uh, when he visits. It's going to be a lovely visit uh, linked to our history as well as to the history of the Portuguese people in South Africa. Okay, thank you very much.